Good morning, fourth graders. Welcome to Robotics Week Two. Woohoo! And so this week we are we will be continuing with our lesson, um, introducing you guys to robotics. But before we do that, I do have a bunch of students who submitted in their writing assignment where you had to answer the question, if I created a robot, it would. And I have um, one right here. This is from Brianna. She sent, actually did hers on paper and handed it to me the other day when I saw her um, at arrival. So she, I'll read you what she said. And she did a really cute picture. I don't know if you can see it, but it's super cute. Um, she said, if I created a robot, it would be an, an animal robot. It would do everything for me. Um, it would be cute and smart, and it would respond to me when I talk to it. And it will always be on my side. And it can also do backflips, and it can do cool tricks. And also, guess what? She's making a cleaning robot. And it's going to be small, cute, and smart. And it will have a broom. Okay, so that's really good. And then it's going to also be able to have a little wet towel and a sensor to be able to detect if an area is clean or not. So that sounds like a really cool, uh, two different cool robots, an animal robot and a cleaning robot. So a few other ones that were sent in, we had David, and he said that his robot is going to be making pillows. So that's interesting, a pillow making robot. And hmm, it's gonna be, he said he just loves fluff. <laughs> interesting. This is, comes from Elijah. His robot is going to be able to go up walls, take pictures, have a walkie talkie built in it, and a camera and wheels. And it would be about the size of a tape roll. And it would be controlled by a remote control and it would also have metal pincers and it would be exactly like the picture above. Let's see the picture. Oh, so it's gonna look like him, cute. And its name would be Bebop. So that would be the robot that Elijah would make. Let's see, I have a few more here. Um, this comes to us from Leah. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, so Leah says that her robot will pick up garbage from the streets and it will help me do my chores and keep the streets safe. Hey, Grace. Um, and it would also um, keep them safe like a police and it will walk my dog in the winter. It will cook breakfast, lunch and dinner. It will do whatever I want. It will dance and play with me and it will get groceries for people that can't leave their homes. So you have a very busy robot, Leah. Sounds like it's going to be doing a lot. Uh, this is Sua. I love her little drawing here, and I love the name of her robot. It's the Doobot. How cute is that? And look at the picture of our Doobot. So it says it will be a robot that will do everything for you. It will respond and think like a human. It will do chores, cook, clean, and everything. And I will name it Doobot. And it will help people do lots of things at the same time, and it will help the world. What a cute little Doobot. We all need a Doobot, right? Because we really need help to get everything done. And let's see, oh, oops, that was the one from the other lesson. Okay, so I think those were the ones I wanted to show you guys. So thank you so much, everybody, for sharing your ideas of all of your robot ideas of the robots that you would create. And I know this isn't due until Friday, so please send them in if you didn't send them in already. And if we have time in our video next week, I can share some more of your ideas of the robots that you guys would create. Okay. So what we're going to be doing right now is continuing with our lesson. So our lesson is um, learning about robots, right? We, we, last week, we really just introduced you to robots and we just talked about what is a robot and we gave a definition here of some things that help us to identify the difference between a machine versus a machine that actually is a robot. And then we just briefly talked about the characteristics of robots. So there are four important areas that robots need, and they are sensing, movement, energy, and intelligence. So these are things that robots need to be able to do whatever the task is that we're asking them to do. So we are going to take a look at these four areas today. So if you could just take out your notes uh, that you started last week and just take something to write with, then you can just jot down some notes 
um, about these four areas because I am going to be giving you a homework today and the homework is going to be a review of last week and this week. So just all of these basic things that we've been talking about with robotics. And you will, I'll, I'll actually tell you about it after I do the lesson. Um, so let's hold off on that. But let's move through and talk about these four characteristics, okay? So the first one that you can put down, and actually let me, I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see better. So the first one is sensing. Okay, let me move my little video. Woohoo, let me get over here now. So robots, they need sensors to be able to see, hear, feel. Why do they need sensors? Because they need to be able to know what's going around on in their environment, going on around in their environment, right? So for example, um, they might need to be able to, to feel something, right? To actually touch it and know that it's there. Um, they may be able to sense light or darkness. So that can be helpful. Um, that they can hear something especially a robot where you were communicating back and forth, they need to be able to hear um, our voice, right? Um, and so there are a lot of different sensors. I mean, there's so many of them. It really, these are just some basic ones, but there's like crazy sensors that can roll where they can allow robots to do um, different types of movements and things like that. Um, even when we get into talking about the driverless cars, um, those I believe have like hundreds of sensors in them. And so there's so many different sensors. But for you guys, just a basic understanding, just to know that there are sensors in robots and they do need them. And they need them to be able to do whatever it is that we're asking them to do. So I'm going to show you two really cool video clips today. One of them is the robot that is on Mars. It's the Curiosity Rover. And it is really cool. It helps scientists to get capture some really amazing footage of Mars. And it tracks what's going on out in, in outer space. Um, and so we're going to look at a short video clip of just the, the pictures, the quality of the pictures that this robot is able to get are just really amazing. And then we're going to be taking a look at a mermaid robot. And I like this robot because it has the sensing in its hands. And you're going to see in the video how the scientists, they're able to feel what the robot is feeling. And so it really helps them to explore in the deep sea, right? Okay, so let me put, put on the first clip and I think you guys are really gonna enjoy these. So I'm gonna put this on. Okay, here's our mermaid. Humanoid robot just explored its first shipwreck. The Ocean One, developed by a team at Stanford University, had its first real world test recently when it surveyed the wreckage of La Lune, a 17th century ship that sunk near the southern coast of France. It basically looks like a robot mermaid, but instead of a tail, it uses a series of thrusters to move around the ocean. The bot's hands are fitted with sensors that can send feedback to the operator. It gives the human controller a better sense for when the robot is touching something firm or delicate. The team that developed the robot says that technology allowed the Ocean One to bring back a centuries-old vase from La Lune without accidentally crushing it. It's meant to keep human divers out of potentially dangerous situations in something like deep water mining or oil rig maintenance. There's another robot that fills a similar role, but instead of taking a humanoid shape, it looks a lot like a snake. At least the Ocean One is a little less creepy looking. For Newsy, I'm Jay Struberg. Okay, so I really, I want to show that to you guys because it's super cool to see how um, this robot that's like a mermaid robot can go in the deep sea and then the scientists they see everything on their screen of what the robot is seeing so it's like they they are actually there too and then you saw how the scientist was moving the hands and feeling so it's able to feel what the robot is picking up what does it feel like is it a hard object is it something soft and so it's just amazing to see how the sensors that are inside of this mermaid robot are able to really help the scientists in their exploration, right? Okay, so let me put the second one on. Hang on, let me put it on. Okay, so here is the Curiosity rover, some of the photos that it's able to take. This is the largest and highest resolution wow, so panorama the Curiosity rover has ever taken. Yes. 
It's made up of almost 1,200 individual images taken over four days. The rover's body is too close for the mass cam's telephoto lens, but we were able to capture the rover using the other mass cam lens. The higher resolution version is nearly 1.8 billion pixels. What I love about this panorama is that we can zoom way in and see details far in the distance. When you start to do that, you can see the rim of the crater we're inside of all the way to the north. Here's an impressive sight. 20 miles away is Slangpost Crater, just inside Gale Crater's rim. End to end, Slangpost is three miles wide. Something huge must have struck here. Whenever I start to think that Mars looks familiar, sights like this dramatic impact crater remind me that we're looking at a different planet. Curiosity is exploring a clay-bearing region on the side of a mountain. This ancient landscape was the site of lakes and streams billions of years ago. They left their clues in the finely layered, clay-rich rock. This crumbling cliff is the edge of the green hue pediment. It's a vast sheet of rock draped over the side of a mountain. It must have formed after the lakes disappeared and the mountain took its present shape. Did it once extend even farther out? Curiosity looks a bit like an abstract painting here. That's because this is a 360 degree perspective. The image is warped, like looking through a fisheye lens. You can make out some amazing details on the rover itself. This is the shadow of Curiosity's mast. Here's RAD, an instrument that detects radiation from the sun and space. Thanks to RAD, we have a better idea of how to protect future astronauts on Mars. Why are there severed tubes and wires on the rover? These tubes were part of the fluid cooling system that circulated throughout the spacecraft that flew the rover to Mars. These wires were like an umbilical cord for data. They were cut during landing. In spite of all the dust, our sundial still tells us to explore. Trailing behind the rover, you can see our tracks including where we climbed up a hill. Even after seven years on Mars, Curiosity is not done making tracks yet. Panoramas like this are like a window to another world. Explore it yourself in a 360 video. Look for the link in the description. Wow, so I, I love to show that video because it just helps you guys to see how amazing robots really can be, right? And how you, we don't even think, well, a robot going on Mars and helping um, scientists to be able to learn more about um, a different planet, right? So it's super cool, right? And just being able to see all the different sensors. So the question that I have is what, um, what sense did the cameras give the robot the sense of sight, right? Being able to see. And so again, right, helping you guys to learn about sensing in robots that they really need it to be able to help them to do whatever it is that we're trying to get them to do for us, right? Okay, so let me move to the next slide, which is energy. So energy. Um, <clears throat> all robots do need energy. Because why? Because they have so many things that they're doing. They're moving, they're sensing, they're thinking and they need to be powered up by something. And I wish, gosh, one of the things that we normally do in the fourth grade robotics is I have this super cute, um, gosh, I don't even know if I could show it to you guys, but it's like, I don't know if, if you've ever seen one of those red solo cups. Um, I know this one's all messed up, but what we do is we get a red solo cup and we get three markers and we put little legs and we tape them in. And then we get a little DC motor and a battery pack that looks similar to this one. And we connect it all and we make our first little robot here in class. And we call it a wiggle bot. And what it does is when you put it down and you plug in the battery pack, it starts to wiggle. And if you take the covers off of the markers, it'll start making a beautiful like artwork with all the different colors as it wiggles around on the paper. And this is such a great, kind of like beginner robot to make 
So I, I don't know. I wish there was a way that we could do it. I mean, I might maybe just send this, the uh, supplies idea home. And if you want to just do it for a, kind of like an extra activity, since we can't really do it together, it's a great way to teach you guys about the sensing because we use a battery pack in the robot. And so if you guys have ever used anything like a remote or any sort of thing that needs batteries, usually you have to put like AA, AAA. So the same thing with robots. Um, you know, the bigger ones, they have more sophisticated, like high powered batteries that, um, that they use, but it's all just batteries, right? And then they plug them in, they charge them up. And so when you think about robots, you always have to think to yourself, how is it getting power, right? What type of energy source is it using? Some robots can even be powered through the sun, through solar power. Um, because why? Because, for example, if it is on another planet, there isn't going to be a charging station, right? And the battery is going to lose life eventually. So it needs a way to get energy. And the sun can be a great way, right? So solar power. And so when you're looking and researching different robots, you can think about the energy. And eventually when you do start to make your own robots and build your own robots, um, like the Wigglebot, you can think to yourself, oh, how will this robot be able to actually do it, right? What, how's it, where's it gonna get energy? And so it usually is a battery pack, okay? All right, so I don't have too much more to say on energy. Um, hopefully you guys understand that part. Um, and if you don't, then just take a look at any electronic that you have at your house. Um, they all have batteries in them, right? Anything you, that you use, um, it either you have to plug it into an electrical outlet or it has a battery, right? Even like an iPhone and iPad, there's a battery in there and you have to charge the battery every time you plug it in, right? So just a little background on that. All right, movement. So when we're thinking about movement, our robots can move in a lot of different ways. Some of them might have wheels, um, legs. And so we're going to take a look at a really fun robot. But before we do that, let me just go over a few things with you guys. So these are different types of motors. So the motor that we use in our Wigglebot robot that we make with the fourth graders is the DC motor. And this is a super basic, small motor, um, and it vibrates when it gets attached to the battery pack. Um, and so then it can create movement. But there's all different types of motors and robots can really, I mean, gosh, they get really sophisticated and complicated with the different types of motors, depending on the movement that they need the robot to do, right? And when we're talking about some of these military robots or robots that are used, you know, in a, lot, a place where the terrain isn't like just a flat, you know, they need to go up and down stairs or maybe it's rocky or something. Um, these robots are amazing what they can do. Um, and just some of them even are like human-like. They call them humanoid robots because they have two legs and it, they look just like a human. Um, so something again for you guys to start thinking about when you look at different robots, how is it moving around, right? And how is it able to do the things that it needs to do? So we are going to look, I love this robot, because how many of you guys would love to have a pet dog robot? Probably everybody, right? So if you have $25,000 sitting around in your piggy bank, you can buy a spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, so maybe if you wanna put that on your Christmas list this year, I would like a spot robot. When you see him, you'll be like, oh my gosh. But so there is a company up in Boston, it's called Boston Dynamics. And this is an amazing company. They make a lot of the robots in the United States. And one of the ones that, that they're um, well known for is the Spot robot. And they have Spot and they have Spot Mini, which is a smaller version of Spot. But let me put the video on because you'll see how it's like a little robot dog. So let me put it on, okay, hang on. Mm. Hi, I'm Russell, and this is Spot. So you've probably seen this robot before, maybe hauling a truck or dancing to Bruno Mars's Uptown Funk. Man, bow, damn money breaking down. Girls, hallelujah. 
It's the first of this generation of semi-autonomous four-legged robots, and it does a lot more than just make videos for the internet. For about a month now, Boston Dynamics has been putting Spot to work, leasing units out to industry partners, and seeing how this kind of robot holds up in the real world. When you're standing next to Spot, the striking thing is how small and sturdy it is. It's just under 3 feet high and weighs 70 pounds, which means it's light enough for a single person to pick up. A lot of the movements you're seeing here are remote controlled by an operator, but Spot has a handful of basic skills it can do automatically. It knows how to climb stairs, how to avoid walls, and even knows how to dance a little. Get, get it right? <laughs> Spot's not tired at all. Of course, we've seen walking robots before, but few of them had Spot's sense of balance. Accelerometers tell Spot if it's moving, and torque sensors in the joints tell it exactly how its weight is distributed. If Spot feels itself tipping forward, a protocol kicks in, telling it to find surer footing. It also has cameras on all four sides, so it can see where to plant its foot. Spot still can't tell the difference between firm ground and loose dirt, which means navigating these dirt piles got a little chaotic. When it does fall, there's a protocol for righting itself, which works most of the time, although it did need human assistance when we flipped it into the bottom of a particularly steep ditch. The simplest way to use Spot is this controller, which uses the same layout as an Xbox. The left joystick moves Spot forward and back, or strafes left and right, while the right joystick spins it around. You can also use the camera view to see what Spot is seeing, and send it to specific waypoints. Tap a Spot on the screen, and Spot will find a way to get there. The controls are really easy to learn, mostly because there isn't that much to control, so much of it's automatic. Within a couple of minutes, I was able to send Spot wherever I wanted, although it does stop at walls because of the object sensor. At the same time, I didn't get the tight connection that you do with video games or RC cars. You can tell it's more designed for automation than human pilots. Boston Dynamics is hoping that a lot of the time, Spot won't need a driver at all. For more complicated tasks, you can chain waypoints together, sending Spot to retrace a path it walked through earlier with human assistance. That could mean checking all the gauges on an oil rig or taking LiDAR scans of a room from a dozen specific points. This version of Spot mostly knows how to navigate spaces, but the plan is for it to carry more sophisticated tools on its back, like a zoomable camera or the claw it uses to open doors. Industry partners can also build their own modules for more specialized jobs. Attach a methane detector module, and Spot could check a whole facility for gas leaks. Attach a LiDAR rig, and Spot could make a 3D map of a whole building from the inside. It's a completely new way for computer programs to interact with the physical world, automating tasks that would otherwise be impossible to do without a human being. There's also just straight-up entertainment. It's really fun to watch this kind of robot do these precise movements, particularly if you have 10 or 15 of them in unison. It's not hard to imagine 50 spots dancing Pikachu style in a theme park. Right now, Boston Dynamics has about 60 beta units. That's the yellow guy you're seeing here, but they've already started building the next generation, which is what they're loaning out. Eventually, they're hoping to have a thousand of them, but right now there's only about 20 being leased out. Now, Boston Dynamics wouldn't say exactly what those bots are doing, since most of the partnerships are still confidential. They also didn't tell us exactly how much the robots cost, since technically Spot isn't for sale. All they told us is that the leases were in the range of what you pay to lease a car, which doesn't say much. One thing we have to talk about, and there's really no other word for it, is the creepiness. Some people get really freaked out by Spot. It moves with a precision that we don't see in the natural world, and it stops dead still whenever it doesn't have a task, which can be unsettling. When you watch these videos, there are all sorts of comments about how these robots are going to rise up and destroy humanity. There was even a Black Mirror episode about it. But I didn't get that sense in person. Really, Spot doesn't recognize people at all. For the robot, you're just an obstacle that's too big to step on. At the same time, Boston Dynamics is really concerned about any situation where Spot might end up harming a person, even if it's just getting your hand pinched by one of the joints. They also said that they didn't want to sell to any clients who would use Spot to harm people or build weapons modules or anything like that, which was good to hear. Spot's great at climbing through piles of dirt, but it doesn't have the social skills to navigate big crowds, and Boston Dynamics has a lot of work to do before it can build those skills. But that does mean that for now, you're probably not going to see Spot anywhere with lots of people around. The company's thinking about construction sites, oil rigs, maybe a few movie sets, but 
those are all pretty tightly controlled spaces. For now, Spot's really just a platform, a stable base where partners can build new modules and new software skills. Once people start building on that platform, Spot's going to get smarter fast, and we may start seeing robots in places we never expected. Hmm. So when we look, I, I, um, the, I think it was last year they had um, the Spot Mini, so that's the other version of Spot. And they did say that it was actually for sale. Now, I don't know, he's mentioning in this video that this particular model is not for sale currently. And so it's interesting to just think about these robots, you know, people being able to actually buy them, right? And so I don't know how many of you guys would be interested in having, in having a spot living at your house with you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but again, these are things we have to really start thinking about simply because of where we are, you know, in our world right now with technology and how these things are starting to become a part of our everyday lives and they're using them more and more. And so as you guys get older, you know, by the time you're my age, I'm sure, you know, you'll be seeing spot around, you know, doing different things and you'll be seeing all sorts of robots around. So it's good for you guys to really just get an exposure to this and that you're, it's, it's in the back of your head and you're starting to think about it, right, as you get older. Because a lot of you guys may end up in these technology fields, um, you know, for your job when you get, when you graduate college. And you're going to need to really know about this. You might even, some of you might even be the ones designing these robots. So it's good to get the basic knowledge. Okay, so the last part uh, that I want to talk about, the last characteristic is intelligence. So if you guys um, think back to the years before, like third grade and second grade, first grade, kindergarten, we did something called computer coding. It was part of our computer science. And we started to learn how to actually go in and do some programming. And we learned this word called algorithm, right? Which was a list of steps that we follow to complete a task. And we would create algorithms on the computer, right? Remember the little blocks in code.org? You would connect all the blocks and you'd press run and whatever your blocks said, that's what would happen in the program, right? And so robots, they also, they need this. They need to have algorithms to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. And they need to have somebody go in there and program them, right? To actually write the code that is giving the intelligence to our robot. So most robots, they use the computer as their brain. So they have the computer brain inside of them. And then what, what's able to happen is the person that goes in and types in all the code is able to then give the robot intelligence, right? And there is this other form of intelligence which is really fascinating. And for you guys who are like super into science and technology, uh, you might have heard about it. It's called artificial intelligence. And this is something that's really, um, it's becoming big now because what they're able to do is teach robots, just like they, we teach you guys at school. You have people that are teaching robots. And what that means is that they are sitting there and they're allowing the robots to go through different experiences to gather information. And as the robot is able to do more things and gather more information, then it's able to make decisions on its own and think on its own. And that's a form of artificial intelligence. Why? Because the robot is now thinking on its own, right? So you guys are all able to think on your own. If I ask you a question, what's your name? You can tell me your name. What's your favorite day of the week? What did you eat last night? What do you think about um, rockets? Uh, how do you like technology? Now, I could just ask you a bunch of different questions and you can use your intelligence to come up with an answer. Well, it's similar with the robots. And hopefully I do have this really cool documentary that I might show you guys because I love how it goes through and it looks at all these different robots. And one of the things it does is it looks into some of the robots that use artificial intelligence and some of them look human-like. I mean, they actually have like hair and like, it's crazy. A lot of these robots are in Japan. Some of you guys may have seen them like on the news or I don't know if you guys watch any, um, you know, technology shows or anything, but 
um, they are out there and they're, they're more popular in the Asian countries right now, but I'm sure they're gonna make their way over to the United States. But we're going to look at a little humanoid robot now named Pepper. Now this robot doesn't have like the features of the human, like the hair and all that. It still is, looks like a robot, but it does have intelligence. And it actually, they've been using it a lot with the COVID-19 where the robot can actually um, look at somebody coming into a building or a school or something. It can take their temperature. It can see if they're wearing a mask. It's able to even detect if they're six feet apart. So it's really cool how the robot is like another person, right? So imagine if you guys walked into the school and instead of seeing a person standing there in the little security room with the, with the thermometer thing that where you go and stand and get your temperature, you saw Pepper. And Pepper was like, good morning, let me take your temperature. So let me put the video on and you guys, I bet you'll think this is super cool. <laughs> is having a little delay. Come back video, come back. Sorry, let's try it from here. Look at my shoppers, keep your distance. Your temperature is good. You can take the temperature. You'll be heat by the crew mask. You have a mouth on your job. He's welcoming, welcoming guests into a quarantine hotel. And in the workplace, look, he's taking the lady's temperature. He's reminding her to hand sanitize. Please that. remember to wear your mask. So he's telling her, please remember to wear your mask. to keep your distance. So what do you guys think, huh? Uh, if we had a pepper robot at the front door for, of school when you guys were coming in, and uh, and then the, you had Pepper saying, good morning, let me take your temperature up. Do you have a mask on? So again, these robots are like people, they're really using them as part of their everyday life. And you know, some people, they go to work and this robot is what they, the first thing they see when they walk into the office building. So keep that in your, in the, in your mind that they're around. And you know, I know as you guys get older, they're probably gonna be, Maybe at your workplace one day, or maybe at your school, you know, when you go to college and you get a little bit older. Um, okay, so your homework is going to be, I have a review sheet. So let me go into the fourth grade here. Kind of lost my website, so hang on. Um, okay, so in the fourth grade, I uploaded a sheet here. So let's go to fourth grade. And it just has some review. Oh, wait, it's not there yet. Okay, hang on. I'm so sorry. Hang on a minute. Okay, so if you go into the fourth grade weekly to do, you'll see down here, it's characteristics of robots. So it says complete the robotics introduction sheet. So if you download here, um, it'll come up. So I have a few questions that are should be in your notes from this week and last week. Um, so the first one is what the robot is. Remember, so it's a fill in the blank. Number two is what we just learned about today, the four characteristics. Um, number three, what do the robots use as their brain? Um, what did the Mars Curiosity, um, the cameras give it its sense of what? Um, okay, number five, we didn't really talk about too much, um, but it's an infrared sensor. 
or the ability to sense heat is an example of a sense that robots can have, but not humans, right? So in, in infrared, that's a type of sensor that robots can have. Two ways they can move, legs, wheels, th th those would be two that we looked at. And then which need do the algorithms help to meet? That was the intelligence, right? So what I would really love for you to do is, since now if you watched, um, you did the lesson from technology class, we learned how to use Google Docs, you can type these answers in Google Docs and then you can just share it with me. So you can type number one, type it up, number two, and then fill in the answers, okay? Um, if you really, I, yeah, I think that would be the best way for you guys to do it because then you're getting practice with typing and sharing your doc, okay? So let's have you do it that way. Um, you don't have to, like for example, for number one, you probably should type up the whole thing, right? And fill it in. Number two, you can just write number two and then list the four characteristics. And probably for most of these, you can just type, type the number and the answer, okay? I don't wanna make you have like too much trouble where you have to type a lot. So um, you can just type number two and list the four things. Number three, just type the answer. You don't have to type the whole thing, just type the answer. Okay, guys, that way it's not too much typing. Um, and then please just share the file, make sure your name's on it inside of Google Docs. Okay, so that's your homework for this week for technology, I mean for, for robotics, and you already know your technology homework from yesterday, okay? If you have any questions, email me, let me know. And then next week we will continue in robotics with um, learning about the reasons for robots, okay? All right, guys, so let me end this and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.